This is an exciting week for the state of Israel. Netanyahu has succeeded in forming a majority coalition and his new government could be sworn in as soon as this Thursday. There are some positive changes coming in this new government as regards to building, specifically in the authorization of new buildings in Judea and Samaria. Over the last week, there have been several shooting attacks here in Samaria. I'm gonna talk all about that. And Israel has seen the biggest wave of Aliyah immigration to Israel in 23 years. I'm just saying and this is the Israel guys. And welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, that you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Welcome back to the show, guys. Good to be back with you again. First off, you know the drill. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode of the Israel Guys. Hey, it really helps us out if you do those things. Hit that like button especially. Uh, throws us into the YouTube algorithm. As you know, a lot of uh, fake news out there on, on YouTube, special social media especially. Uh, so when you, when you do that, that helps us get the truth out to many more people across the internet and across of YouTube specifically. Um, also, guys, if you would like to help us here at the Israel Guys, right now we are in the midst of our year-end fundraising campaign uh, here in Israel. At, at the Israel Guys, we run a volunteer organization called Hayuvel, Serving Israel. We bring volunteers from all over the world to serve right here in Judea and Samaria and help out the Jewish uh, farmers living here in the biblical heartland of Israel. And right now we're in the midst of our year-end fundraiser. We have until December 31st to reach our goal. And uh, I think right now we're at 22% on our fundraiser. Link will be in the description below. So if you go and uh, check that out, donate, that would be much appreciated by us. A really cool factor is that if you donate here uh, until December 31st in this campaign, every dollar you give will be automatically doubled to make twice the impact. Uh, so go right now, click the link in the description below and uh, donate to our year end fundraising campaign to launch us into 2023. We have a lot of exciting plans. Uh, we're planning to plant 20,000 trees here in the biblical heartland of Israel. Uh, we're planning many uh, film, exciting film projects here at the Israel Guys. We're hoping to bring many hundreds of volunteers from all over the world uh, to support the biblical heartland of Israel. So guys, we'd appreciate it if you go check that out right now. Link will be in the description below, or you can click up here uh, a little bit faster right there. All right, guys, exciting week for Israel because just at the end of last week, uh, you probably already know this, but Netanyahu, excuse me, finally succeeded in forming a majority coalition in the government. Uh, he handed in his uh, his prospective coalition majority government to the president of Israel, Isaac Herzog, with just 18 minutes to spare before his deadline. Um, so we're going to see a lot of changes coming in the next week. Uh, next weeks ahead as this new government comes in. And uh, some prominent figures that will be in this new government, obviously Netanyahu himself, along with um, Yariv Levine, who is the second in L the Likud party. Um, other prominent figures will be Betzalel Smotrich from Religious Zionism. You also have uh, Itzamar Ben Gvir from the Otzma Yehudit party. Um, Arye Derry from Shaz. You have UTJ. Um, all these guys will be ministers in Netanyahu's new government along with many, many uh, more people in those positions. Um, so Netanyahu has, so now that he's given his his uh, coalition, his government to the president saying, I've succeeded in forming a majority government, the way it works is now he has until January 2nd to swear in his new government. Um, but there's some reports that actually Netanyahu was pressing to do it as early as this Thursday. So that would be um, exciting to see that happen this Thursday, right now in the Knesset, uh, with the session starting today, they're probably going to be passing some legislation that is a part of these coalition deals that he made with these parties. Uh, part of the deals is they need to pass certain uh, legislation before the new Knesset is sworn in. So we're likely to see that today happening in uh, the Knesset. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of things happening. There's a, maybe we'll do a full breakdown on exactly the different positions and what that means for the state of Israel in a future show. Um, but uh, one interesting thing I saw as regards to Judea and Samaria and re happening with this new government is that Netanyahu, under an agreement reached with the religious Zionism party under the head of uh, the 
the head of which is Betzalel Smotrich, um, they reach an agreement where the prime minister will actually transfer a lot of his power in regard to building, and specifically the authorization of new building in Judea and Samaria, they will transfer that from the prime minister to the head of the civil, the IDF civil administration, which is under, under the defense ministry. Um, so practically, what that means for this new government in Netanyahu is that um, the some of the authorization because right now the crazy thing, ha the crazy way it works with authorizing new building in Judea and Samaria. And when I say new building, I'm not talking about Arab construction because um, unfortunately the Arabs are building like crazy illegally in uh, Judea and Samaria, in specifically in Area C, taking over Jewish land that is allotted for Jewish building. Um, but when I'm talking about authorization, I'm talking specifically to Jewish building because the Arabs are doing it like crazy illegally, um, and for a Jew to do it for these settlements and the, these communities to expand and for the Jewish people to actually build new buildings legally, this uh, is the process they have to go through. So right now, the, pres the prime minister has tight control over the advancement um, and approval of construction within Judea and Samaria. And right now, he has four um, approvals that he has to give, his office has to give personally for any structure built in Judea and Samaria. So four times he has to sign off for a new building to be built inside of Judea and Samaria, which is crazy if you think about it, uh, for the for the for like the head um, of the government to have to sign off personally four times for any um, new structure. So somebody wants to somebody wants to build a new house in his community or out, out on a piece of land. He has to has to get it four times uh, signed by the prime minister. And right now, it seems like mainly um, the reason that that has been so tightly controlled by the prime minister's office is because of the sensitivities, unfortunately, of building in Judea and Samaria, the political pressure, international pressure um, that the government of Israel faces, and specifically with uh, its relationship with the United States, the United States being very anti building in Judea and Samaria, very against, has been for many, many years. We see, we see a kind of a shift in how much they're um, opposing it with the different administrations, uh, Republican presidents versus Democratic presidents. But overall, it's been uh, pressure against building inside of Judea and Samaria. Um, so right now, the it's going to go from with this new agreement with religious Zionism and the prime minister is that the prime minister will, will transfer a lot of those approvals and powers down to the head of the civil administration. So right now, the prime minister has to approve it four times. And then so with this new agreement, he's going to have to he's going to approve it once the initial approval. And then he's going to hand it to the civil administration. They're going to take it over the project from there. And in this case, um, it, this is really, really good because the head of the civil administration under this new government is Betzalel Smotrich, who is the head of the Religious Zionism Party and is very pro-settlement and pro the establishment of um, uh, the full state of Israel as, as um, laid out by God in the Bible, you know, firstly, but also that Israel has always had, uh, always had the right to settle and, and to build inside of the, the biblical heartland of Judea and Samaria. Betzalel Smotrich is a uh, uh, religious, religious Orthodox J Jewish politician. The MK is the head of the Religious Zionism Party. He lives inside of Judea and Samaria. He lives in Kidumim, which is just 25 minutes from where I'm sitting right here. So he knows the struggle. He knows what's happening here. So for him to have um, that authority there to be able to um, analyze new projects and give the approval for that, obviously the initial approval still has to come from the prime minister himself, um, but this will be hopefully be really good for um, the advancement and building of new Jewish settlement inside of Judea and Samaria. So Betzla Smotrich, um, he's going to be the head of the civil administration from the IDF, uh, which actually governs civilian life inside of Area C of uh, Judea and Samaria. He's uh, the, serving as a minister in the defense ministry. So he's not the defense minister, but he's under the defense minister serving as, as a ministry minister in that uh, ministry. I know that's probably really confusing. So many ministers and ministries <laughs> happening in Israel's government, but uh, kind of just a little bit of a, hopefully a simple breakdown where we'll see hopefully much more a positive approach to building inside of Judea and Samaria, especially with such a right-wing government happen, uh, coming into power in the state of Israel uh, today. So that's uh, one of the things that I saw was very positive about coming with this new government coming in. 
as well. And uh, we can continue to, as uh, uh, many of you are, are Americans, I'm American, uh, continue to encourage our government and to make our voices heard, saying um, that we can encourage them not to put pressure on Israel to stop building in Judea and Samaria, to, to, uh, to, que uh, to quench that building inside of Judea and Samaria, and to say, well, no, we need to be pro uh, annexation. We need to be pro uh, building inside of Judea and Samaria. Um, the Jewish people have the right to build and live inside of the, uh, the biblical heartland of Israel, where most of the Bible um, was either written or took place inside of the place that the world calls the West Bank. The world says that it it's, belongs to the Palestinians. It's not the case. It doesn't belong to the Palestinians. It belongs to the people of God, it belongs to the people, uh, the Jewish people uh, in the land of Israel. According to uh, Khan 11 News, the purpose of this change with the policy in the prime minister's office in uh, regards to Betzalel Smotrich taking a lot of this authority is to normalize construction approvals in Judea and Samaria and to bring the situation inside of Judea and Samaria with, with building closer to the situation it is in what they would say, we would call Israel proper, which is outside of the Green Line. Um, uh, the prime minister and the minister of defense are not required to approve every step of construction in outside of the green line in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and these places, they're not, they don't have to approve every single step of a construction project. Um, so it should be the same way inside of Judea and Samaria. Um, this is, uh, there's also, Netanyahu has also made statements that he will advance policies that support the application of sovereignty over West Bank settlements. Um, and he said that uh, he will include um, policies that will end the civil administration's power over civilian life, kind of bring it close to annexation of Judea and Samaria. He said these things. Um, we'll see whether this is likely to happen or not. There's so much pressure from Israel's left and also from international pressure that it seems very unlikely that um, steps towards sovereignty or uh, the sovereignty of Israeli settlements would even take place under Netanyahu's government. Um, if he's He's making the statements, which is good, but uh, it, the, what really matters is if he actually follows through on it. Uh, we will see. Hopefully that would happen, but it doesn't seem likely at this point with the way Israel's government works and the, with all the pressure from the international community on Israel and every single move that they make inside of Judea and Samaria. Um, all right, guys, there were several shooting attacks that happened in Samaria last week. Um, well, last night, just last night, Sunday night, um, terrorists opened fire on an Israeli vehicle between the community of Chavad Gilad and Yitzhar in Samaria, which is right close to where I'm sitting, uh, just down the hill. The vehicle thank, uh, sustained damage, but thankfully the people in the vehicle were not injured at all. There were bullet casings found nearby. Um, after the incident, the IDF security forces blocked the entrances to uh, Shrem, to Nablus, to search for the terrorists. And actually, the Lion's Den organization, who has uh, seems to be rearing its head again uh, after being kind of subdued for a while there, claimed responsibility for this shooting attack last night. Um, also... There were several shooting attacks last week, and actually the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, which is the, the military, uh, they call it the military wing of Fatah, which is basically the terror wing of Fatah, um, which is led by Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority, um, his military wing, which is a terrorist group, um, they have claimed responsibi responsibility for the shooting attacks that happened last week, um, not the Lion's Den shooting one, uh, but the other attacks that happened inside of Judea and Samaria, they published a military announcement claiming responsibility for these attacks. Um, according to their announcement, on Friday at 5.30 in the evening, heavy fire was directed at the Shaked settlement. At 7.40 in the evening, snipers shot at IDF post at the Jalame crossing north of Janin. Um, the, they said they filmed the attacks. Uh, the, the, they were responsible for it. On Saturday at 3.55 a.m., heavy fire was directed um, and explosive devices were thrown at IDF forces near the Janine refugee camp. Um, and they said that the uh, Palestine, they're emphasizing in this military, uh, this military report or this military announcement that uh, the Palestinian people have a right to struggle and continue in the way of jihad and martyrdom to avenge the pure martyrs and to respond to the crimes of the Zionist enemy who escalate against our people. 
Um, this doesn't really make sense. Their statement. I mean, we know we know the Arab uh, regime. We know, we need know their their political agenda. We know their their ideology to, to wipe out Israel and all this. But just the wording um, to continue in the way of jihad, which is holy war, right? Um, holy war, killing people, martyrdom, which is terror, going out and, and killing innocent civilians um, and being killed in the process. Um, is the response to the crimes of the Zionist enemy who escalate our, against our people. There is no Zionist enemy that is escalating against the Palestinian people. You know that. We've said that multiple times. There's no, there's no facts to prove that. And uh, it's just it's just a flat-out lie. But it's the propaganda they use to promote their ideas and their agenda. Um, also, in the Friday night attack, where they shot several rounds at the, the Jewish community of Shaked, um, the rounds actually hit a house in the village, and bullets entered the window of a child's bedroom. Um, thank God nobody was hurt. Nobody was even uh, injured at all or, or, or uh, involved in the attack. Maybe they weren't at home. Not exactly sure all the details, but thankfully nobody was injured in this attack. Could have been very, very bad, uh, very detrimental um, for that family there. But that's the report of uh, incidents in Judea and Samaria for this past week. Thankfully, thank God, uh, through miraculous uh, prevention that nobody was injured in all these shooting attacks um, around the area here in Samaria. Um, also, on Thursday night, there was um, another incident, I guess you could say. There was, it was really kind of a strange attack. We, we haven't really seen this much, but there was a terrorist attack in the town of Kfar Qasim, which is actually an Arab town outside of the Green Line. It's just about 20 minutes outside of Tel Aviv. Um, a terrorist called the police and lured them to his location where he opened fire with a weapon and then attempted to run over the police officers with his vehicle. Um, the police released the body cam footage as well as recordings of the incident or the phone conversation. And actually, in the phone conversation, you can hear the terrorist instructing the officers or like telling them where he's at. So the officers apparently thought that they were responding to some sort of incident, that, that he needed the help of the police. They were coming. They were talking to him on the phone. Uh, the terrorist was telling them exactly where he was, where they should come. And uh, the, you could see the, the security camera footage and the body cam footage, um, the phone conversation stopped when the terrorist opened fire on these officers. And uh, amazingly, again, nobody was hurt in this attack. Um, terrorist opened fire, the police retreated, and then the, the terrorist jumped in his vehicle and attempted to run over the police officers. Um, afterwards, thankfully, the terrorist was neutralized by the security forces on the scene, and uh, nobody, again, like I said, uh, neither of these police officers were hurt here. Kind of a strange um, incident where this, this terrorist is luring these police officers to him in order to attack them. Um, the, according to the commander of the police central district, the attack was likely planned a few days in advance. Also, they searched the building and the vehicle that the terrorists had, and what did they find? They found a Carlo-type weapon, ammunition, firebombs. They also found a knife in the terrorist vehicle. Um, so yeah, this guy was was ready to kill and uh, ready to do what he was trained to do as a terrorist and go out and kill and, and murder innocent, um, innocent Jewish uh, Israeli civilian lives in Israel. Um, kind of strange, the mayor of the Arab town, Kfar Qasim, uh, attended the funeral of the terrorist who lured, lured the police to him uh, to shoot and attack them. He went to the funeral and claimed that he wasn't sure that the shooting was a terrorist attack. Um, we'll play the video here, the security camera footage, but you guys can kind of judge for yourself uh, whether this was a planned terrorist attack or whether it's just, you know, some incident where they got in a firefight with the guy. Um, you can pretty easily see for yourself crazy uh, that this this the Arab mayor would say something like this. He did say he will uh, he'd trust the investigation that will happen um, into this incident. But when when you have the leaders that are supposedly supposed to be making peace, uh, saying things like this, um, that they're not sure if this is a terrorist attack or even Mahmoud Abbas, his his um, military wing taking responsibility for these terror attacks. This is not not good. And you can't trust these guys to make peace. You can't expect to actually have a successful uh, peace agreement or successful peace process um, with these guys. Uh, that's the report um, from Judea and Samaria. Also, good news to leave you with you. We leave with you guys today on the show. According to data from the Jewish Agency, 
Some 70,000 people from 95 different countries immigrated to Israel in 2022. And this is the biggest year, um, according to the, this data, this is the biggest year for Aliyah in 23 years. And uh, we're seeing a big increase from 2021, where we saw 28,000 immigrants uh, made Aliyah in the year of 2021. Um, the Jewish agency data shows that uh, 37,000 Immigrants arrived from Russia, uh, 14,000 from Ukraine, 3,000 from North America, 2,000 from France, 1,000 from Belarus, uh, other countries, Ethiopia, Argentina, Great Britain, South Africa, Brazil, just a few of the countries that they came from. Guys, these are Jewish people coming home from all over the world. And uh, this is super exciting because... As you know, as Christians, the Bible talks about the Jewish people. The prophets all talk about the Jewish people returning to Israel, coming back to their homeland to live and be established, uh, no more to be pulled out from the land um, uh, that God promised to the nation of Israel says they're going to come back. And guys, we're seeing it happen. Uh, the nation of Israel, Jewish people coming back. And that's what Aliyah means. It means going up, returning, uh, coming back to the land of Israel to make it their home as God promised in the very beginning to give it to the nation of Israel. So that's your good report from the week here at the Israel Guys. Let us know what you think in the comments below. In the meantime, tune out the fake news and tune in to what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.